All right, guys, today we're welcoming to the show Farrah Brittany from the hit show, the hit Netflix show, Buying Beverly Hills. Farrah, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited and happy to be here. I I have to say really quick, one, I love the background. It's so like just calming in like the same oh, way that I have to you. operate. Yes. And then <laughs> thank you. on top of that, you know, before we jump into all of the shenanigans of it all, Jason and I tried our best to do real estate in Los Angeles. We just moved back no to way. Palm Beach. Yes. We moved back to Palm Beach about two years ago, and we were with Rodeo Realty under a guy named Roger Perry. Oh, yeah. I know, yeah, Roger. That's great. Okay. Yes. Wait, so, did we ever cross paths? Well, I actually reached out to you at one point, but you were so busy, I'm sure. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm what, happened? Really... what did you say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm really bad at this, but if you need an assistant, I would love to learn from the best. But I think that Aww. you were just, you have so much going on. And then, you know, you have your, I, I want to say dad, because I feel like you look at him like a second father, not a stepdad, because mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. th- that gets a little blurred. But then you have your dad running this entire business, this is, you know, like successful business, and you're like right there with him and you're killing it with the deals. And we get to see all of that on Buying Beverly Hills. Thank Holy you. cow. How are you? It's crazy. I'm great. I'm great. It's been a wild couple of weeks. Um, just riding on the high and it's just like a new, it's like a little new pep in my step. It's a little excitement that I needed, you know? I mean, there's a lot of exciting things in real estate, obviously every day, but this is just something new. So um, I can't complain, but I feel bad. I never got to your, back to your email. I get a lot of those emails and I do my best to try to get back to everyone, but it is hard. Um, But I apologize. Maybe we could have been friends. (laughs) We can become friends now. Yes, the landscape exactly. of real estate is just so hard to navigate. I mean, it's just you have clients reaching out to you all the time. I mean, I oh I, I could not even keep up with with work email, let alone a personal life. And for you also sharing on the show your relationship and, and dealing with, with clients and builders. And it's just it is a lot. But I did have a question for you because when we did do real estate poorly in Los Angeles, <laughs> we were really Wait, you interested. Can stop saying that now, by the way. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were really interested in the agency because there is a certain dynamic about the agency, a, a culture, a cultural aspect of it. You know, you guys really kind of emphasize that team culture mentality at the yeah. agency. And I know a lot of real estate agents want to be in the agency. Mm-hmm. What else do you think besides that makes the agency so special? Hmm. It definitely is the culture. That is number one. And people throw around that term a lot. But we just got back from our three-day forum in the desert where all of our agents came together. And it was like pretty much like being at Burning Man for a real estate company, but <laughs> with the learning, the the speakers, the motivation, like people were crying, just learning so much. And then we had one final party and just the relationships are palpable. We have true, true professionals. But yeah, collaboration is not something that you see normally in real estate companies. It's a lot of people under their own silos, kind of like keeping to themselves because they're actually like competing with people within their own company. And so when we built a company based on like true culture and true collaboration, that really is the main thing that sets us apart. Obviously, we're also known for our marketing and having really sexy marketing and properties and all of that and truly delivering on lifestyle. But at the heart of it all, it's our people, for sure. Can I just ask you really quick, and you know what I find so fascinating about you and why I was so excited about having this conversation was because you have such a famous family, but I think where people miss the mark is like, they want to focus on the Paris Hilton or the Kathy Hilton or the Kyle Richards of it all, right? Your mom, mm-hmm. your aunt, your cousin. And it's like, I'm watching you on buying Beverly Hills. And I'm like, guys, we have a star here. She's Aww, <laughs> absolutely stunning. You. She's vulnerable. She's everything. I just Appreciate wanted to ask that. you, embarking on this journey because you're already so successful you don't have to do it right like nobody's holding your feet to the fire like sign the contract with netflix and film buying beverly hills Mm -hmm. and i'm sure watching your mom you had some reservations from the time that you decided okay i'm going to do it to the end of it and now all of the feedback that you're getting 
Do you have any re- like regrets? I don't, but I was very hesitant before, during, and after until, and I hate to say that like, oh, now that I see that the feedback has been good and I saw the final product, now I'm okay with it. But I am a very particular person and it's true. I didn't need to do this. I do just fine in my job. So it did feel like a big risk because this could have gone any which way, you know, um, we can bring ourselves, but obviously there is such thing as producing and editing. I did not know how I was going to be portrayed. I did see that my mom had, you know, a bit of a rough last season. I see, you know, what's going on out there in the, in the reality world. So I was like, am I putting myself in a bad situation? I'm trying to do a show that's about my profession, which is another layer of kind of anxiety because it's not just they show up and follow you as yourself throughout the day. I need to make sure I'm always being my most professional self. I'm representing my company and my clients. So you always are thinking um, how to walk the fine line of being authentic and vulnerable, but also professional and all these things. So I was really nervous and waiting for it to come out. I was like, shoot, I wish I could turn back time. Should I have not done this? Like, I just don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but to be honest, um, very happy with how it turned out. And they did deliver on their promise that it is a professional show. Yes, we have some drama, but it is a professional show. So definitely no regrets. Um, But, you know, it just, as we've seen on other shows, it's just like, you're only as good as your last season. So now it's like, oh my God, the pressure, if we get picked up a second season, you know, what's that going to be like? So I feel like it's never ending. You know, do you think? Do you think that like because we watch, you know, we, there's a lot of of real estate shows, you know, mm-hmm. out today, right? You have like million dollar listing and and selling sunset. What I think made the dynamic so different for this is some of the people like uh, Maurizio, yourself, uh, your sister are recognizable from past reality shows we've seen on TV. So we all have mm-hmm. that kind of recognition, and then you guys are a family. And you're running a business, but like you said, the culture is different at the agency where you have a lot of other brokers with their own thing happening within, but we have the little drama mm-hmm. between that, but it, it, it really is enough. And I feel like it's, it's, it wasn't as produced as we have seen before. Do yeah. you think that adding that family dynamic and kind of opening your life a little bit kind of shifted what, like or shifted helped that the success of the show? Yeah. I think for sure. Yeah, of course. I think it helps that we were kind of known already. So people were intrigued and I don't appear that much in my mom's show. So I think people were kind of interested, like, who is she? I've kind of always been in the background. Um, I don't really show that much of my personality on social media and stuff. So I think there was a sort of intrigue. And also with Mauricio, you see like kind of like his silly side just as the husband on the housewives, but you don't see his serious side and how he's running a global company with 1500 agents and 600 staff. So I think that definitely helped with the interest and to like get it off the ground. But then of course we had to deliver on our show. We had to have other great cast members. We had to have cheap teaching moments. We did not want it to feel super produced. We did not want it to be overly dramatic because that's not what our company is. And in fact, we were nervous. We were like, we all get along really well. Like what if we have no drama? Who's going to want to watch that? But inevitably, there is some drama. Drama. Uh, I think that all. I think to like piggyback off of what you're saying too is, I think you know watching last season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, like there can be drama that's incorporated into reality shows, but I feel like there's like a huge pivot that's being made because I, especially after the pandemic, I feel like people don't want so much negativity. It's really hard. Mm-hmm because we've gone through such a long period of time with that. And for you, one question that popped into my mind immediately, as soon as I found out that we were doing this interview was, listen, you and Alexia, you both remind me so much of Kyle, which is so (laughs) fun to see. And I remember you going to college, right? On Beverly Hills and like your mom, like, you know, crying. And I'm like, that's my mom. And it's like so relatable, but you have this relationship with your sister And it plays out and it's a really positive relationship. It's almost like you act as a mentor and encourager. And if there's anything that she needs or if there's any drama that's surrounding her, you're like, hold on, this is my family. Let me set this aside and I'm going to step in. Is that you have to be getting different feedback because unfortunately, and I don't want to make this anything about Beverly Hills or your mom. um, Love Kyle, by the way. 
But, Thank you. you know, we see ups and downs with her and Kim and her other sister, Kathy. Yeah. But for you, you navigated it in such a different, positive way. And I don't think that that was anything against Kyle. I think that mm-hmm. you're kind of dealt the cards that you're dealt. But for you, like, it was incredible. The way that you navigated this entire reality show, we didn't Thank get, you. like, a bad moment. And that was really refreshing. Yeah, I think that just my sister and I have a very strong relationship and we have a big age gap and we only became really super close in the last, I don't know, maybe four or five years. And I have the very protective older sister um, feel towards her and also want to be her mentor and I want to encourage her. I also want to give tough love, but I have a harder time doing that. So I think that's just what our dynamic is. And um yeah, I know for my mom, it's it's been harder for her because she has a different relationship with her sisters. There's more ups and downs. And obviously, they're also on a show that's definitely more sensationalized. It's definitely more about bringing the drama and stirring the pot and moving storylines. And our show was, is not so much about that. So um, I think it made it easier for us. Um, and yeah. speaking of, of navigation though, too, I'm sure, you know, with this, this show launching and it's been such a success and I really, I can't wait for season two saying there is going to be a season two. I think there's going to be a season oh, two. Oh yes. Season two. I mean, four, five. Five. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, gave us, it, it gave us a cliffhanger bringing, bringing your other sister in. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, this is going to be really good. So but funny. have you found all of the press and navigating press like, I know people probably want to bring up your cousin, your mom, your whatever. Are are people being also, um, how do I say it, like conscious of the fact that you are also on a show and they want to talk to you about the show? Or do you feel yourself fending off a lot of questions about your family? No, luckily, it's been mostly about the show. I mean, I did one last week and towards the end, yes, we, we got into that. And of course, the headlines, page six and all that just that was the headline, you know, me talking about my mom and my aunt. And I was like, what do you mean? The whole interview was supposed to be about my show. That was one little snippet, but I get, I know what clickbait is and how that all works. So I guess it's inevitable. Um, That's what people want to know about. So it's understandable, but obviously right now my focus is about our show. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Jason, I want to ask Farah really quick too. Um, because we were asked to do a show on Bravo and Ooh. it was, yes, um, cool. this might be surprising to you, but <laughs> we did interviews for Vanderpump Rules because wow. we worked for LVP for a long time Okay, and um, met your mom multiple times. But for you, I'm wondering, because we had sort of this like um, energy within the restaurant of people who would do these interviews for the reality show who wouldn't necessarily get picked. And then it was like this sort of animosity in it all because they weren't picked to do it. And you guys picked a very dynamic group of people to be on Mm. Buying Beverly Hills. And you had that perfect, just, it's like you portioned out the perfect cocktail. You have the right amount of drama, the beautiful homes and the family dynamic of it all. Mm. Did you ever have somebody who came to you and kind of said, why not me? Like, why was I not picked? A hundred percent. And the thing is like, we put out the casting to the whole company in the beginning and the casting people from the production, they whittled it down um, to the final 10. I mean, naturally, since it's a show about the family dynamic, Alexia, Mauricio and I were inevitable, but the other seven, we did not pick them. We did not recommend them. We just said, you guys pick whatever you think is going to make the best show. You're the experts. Here's all of our people. But they did want it to be like organic connections. So they didn't want to pick people on our company that I had zero ties or relationships to. But other than that, they picked them. So I think there were some upset people after the fact. Like I think a couple of people even left the company because they were really hoping that they were going to be put on the show. But after it's aired since then, it's been even crazier because people are seeing how well it's doing and all that. So I have a lot of people reaching out to me just saying like, Hey, second season, like put in a good word. How, how do I get on the show? And it's like, I'd love for as many people as possible, but (laughs) at the end of the day, they can't follow that many storylines and it has to be the right, um, like you said, like the right recipe that fits into the group and has 
some compelling storyline or, you know, like John Grauman, for example, like he brings amazing properties and he's a great mentor, but that's somebody who we were like, I don't know what he's going to be like on TV. It's like a super serious guy. And it turns out like people are loving him. They love that he gives those teaching moments and that he's a mentor to kind of all of us. So it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't come off disingenuous at all. And, and I think that's no. why it's, it's so successful, but you know, the agency is an exclusive agency and you do have these agents like John who are mentoring agents. Mm-hmm. How does the agency, and this is such a real estate question, but I'm just so curious because you know, we were poor real estate agents. Yeah, we were the worst. So we at least we do own. Well, it's it. hard. Yes, it's, it's really hard. hard. We have so much respect for you and your position and your job. Thank so, you. Yes. What What does the agency look for in a new agent when when hiring or bringing on a new agent? And also, mm-hmm. when is the point where you have to tell an agent they're not performing enough to be at the agency anymore? Oh. That's a good question. The first question is, so we don't like someone who just gets their license cannot join the agency unless they're brought in under somebody's wing, like as their mentor. So I've had people come up to me and ask me to join the agency. And I said, like, I'll kind of like sponsor you. And, um, but they still have to fit, you know, the characteristics. Like we have like our rules, like no assholes, which we do our best to uphold, <laughs> even though I've seen people online being like, Oh really? What about Joey and Ben? But at the end of the day, they're not real assholes. Um, they we still have need a to, TV show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they have to be hungry. They have to, you know, have some connections or have some sort of like vision for how they're going to get business, just kind of like fit our culture. And, but the thing is, you know, we're all independent contractors. I'm sure probably the spot isn't guaranteed to stay in the agency, you know, to the end of time if you're doing zero deals. And it also costs money as an agent to, um, have, you know, your yearly fees, um, and like to pay your, ENO insurance. So usually that weeds people out if they're not doing any business, they're not usually willing to pay, you know, to stay within the company. But I don't know that we just say, Hey, peace guys, you haven't done any business. Like you're out. Maybe I just don't know. Maybe you oh, do okay. a great job at recruiting that yes. you do such a great yes, job. That, that you no, don't we don't really have to. The- <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I- I wanted to add into this fair because that was one of my questions too. Jason stole it from me. Sorry. But <laughs> I I didn't know because from what we're seeing on the show, I don't look at your show on Netflix. And it's one of the reasons that we binge this with Thai food and I think Chipotle and everything in the same yes. day. We binged your entire show and we were obsessed and we could not take our you know, like ourselves away from it. But I think one of the reasons we thought you'd be more privy or like around the weeding out process was because your dad, you know, it seems like he's like, we're going to keep the agency within the family. Mm -hmm. And we need, when we have a future C, you know, like CEO and you're like, I don't want that. But I I wanted to ask you why, why would that not be like something that you would strive for as opposed to just continuing on your journey with just total real estate and I don't want to run a company? Great question. Mm. So like I said, we have 1,500 agents, 600 staff. And from the second Mauricio wakes up every day, he has his earbuds in. He's on calls from 7 a.m. probably till you know 8, 30, 9 at night. He's getting on planes. He's speaking back to back to back at panels, conferences, office openings. He's managing, I mean, people wanting this, that, and the other, as you saw on the show. It's a very tough job. And there's so many hard decisions you have to make. You really have no life. And I think that's great and it's fun. And I'd love to be a female CEO and all that. But I truly don't think I could handle the amount of stress and overwhelm like my personality, I can only take so much. Some people like thrive on literally that kind of adrenaline. I really get stressed out. So um, I think it just sounds really, really hard. And maybe that's just my own fear potentially, but I just would have to think like if I could grow into that role and really have it in me, but I don't think that I could do as good of a job as him. So it's not off the table, but it's just like, it's a, a hard life. It's a hard life. Yeah. yeah. And there's no right way of doing it too. I mean, with, when you're like always so busy making decisions that have to be made so fast, but I can so relate in that sense of 
if there's too much going on, I get stressed out. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's I'm like, like- it, I, I don't know. Adam is the opposite. He can do that all That's day, every amazing. day. And, I and, live for it. I love yes. like stress drives me. <laughs> really? And it's probably I like wish a sick addiction. It drove me like, but when he comes to the office, there's sometimes like a line of agents, like 25 people coming in. Hey, do you have a second? He's sitting with somebody. Hey, there's it's nonstop. And I don't know how he even like divides his energy. Or it, uh, it, there's just so much. Everyone's pulling him in all these different directions. So yeah. Wow. Listen, we, Farrah, we know your time is so precious. I mean, we know what it's like to be an agent. Um, a I know really you're, bad one. A really yeah. bad one. <laughs> I, I don't need not to say that, but yes, we don't know what it's like to be. So Farrah. we actually Can we don't just elaborate really on know that really quick. What it's like? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, but I, you know, I I know that you were probably introduced to real estate by Maurizio, maybe, but this job isn't for someone to do. I mean, in in my experience, not not a, like a second job, not something to do on the side. You really no. have to commit to it. And to commit to something, you really have to be passionate about it. How did you know that real estate was your passion? And how did you make that decision? I'm doing this and I'm committing to this. So I've always been very passionate about homes, about neighborhoods in LA. It was kind of very like aspirational when I was little. Um, we didn't have like a really, really nice house. And all my friends did. And I would just like love going to other people's houses. And I would actually ask Mauricio when I was really little, like, how when can we get a house with stairs? Like I wanted two stories. And he would say, well, when we have this many cushions, he made like some analogy, like when we have 13 cushions, then we'll have a house. And I said every day, like, how many cushions do we have now? And he would be like, we have two and we need 13. So it was like kind of funny. I always just like wanted that lifestyle. And obviously now we're very fortunate. Like we have a very different life now than we did when I was little, but so I was always just paying attention to that kind of thing. And also I'd go to open houses on Sundays. I'd work with him over the summer at at different internships um, with Mauricio. And when I was graduating college, I wanted to be a psychologist actually. But when he said, we're starting He's like, I'm starting our own company. Like, do you want to be part of this? From day one, I was like, oh, okay, well, here's an easy, this is an easy choice. But I actually thought it was kind of a stigma to be a real estate agent. Um, I just was like, oh, that's kind of embarrassing. Like, I don't know. It's just not like, that's great that you do that. But I think I want something bigger for me in life. Um, But then I realized like, okay, this is a family business. This is an amazing job. The, The amount of money you can make is a lot. Um, you can still have somewhat of a fle- flexible schedule. So I was like, why am I so like against this idea of being a realtor? And once I let that go, everything just kind of flowed from there. It was free game. I yeah. do because we know, and I, I'm sure Jason might have like another question or two, but, and this is not, this is not meant to like bait you into anything, but I do have like kind of like a fire rapid round of questions that I'm so curious okay. to pick your brain on since you, especially it just came to my head when you mentioned your home. First question, what were your thoughts when you moved from the home that we saw on the beginning seasons of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Well, when your parents moved to the mm-hmm. old Smokey Robinson estate, like was that, that had to have been weird. For sure. I mean, I haven't lived at home since I was 17. So the very first house that you guys saw in Housewives, like the very first white party, do you want a Louboutin in your eye? Remember my mom said that. that Yes, yes, yes. So that was the last house I lived in with the fam. Um, And then I went to college. I moved back. I got my own place. But but still, it was crazy when they moved to that house because another thing that I always dreamed of having was gates in front of the house. And not only do they have gates, but they have like a football field until the front door and that (laughs) yard. And I just, even like, I just still, I'm very um, like, wow. Like, I can't believe this is our life. Like I don't take it for granted. I've seen my parents. It's kind of like we grew up with our parents. Um, We watched them. We weren't already born into them being in these lives. I mean, Portia sort of, but, kind of grew up with my mom and Mauricio and they found their success actually a little bit later in life. And, but because they're so young and had us so young, it's like we grew into these different stages together. So it's still pretty crazy. Like when they got that house, I was like, Oh wow, this is like the house that I dreamed of when I was a kid. You're like, even though I don't live there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Listen, your house is beautiful too. And then my next question is obviously you have your 
baby sister, Portia, and she's mm-hmm. still so young, but it's been so much fun for the viewers to watch her grow up. Mm-hmm. And has she ever expressed to you like, big sis, I'm going to be right there with you? Because when I see her and on the show and stuff, I'm like, this is so crazy. And I think this is like premature, but I see her just being like, ridiculously famous like just yes. being out there like that's how I view her I almost view her as like kind of the Paris Hilton of your particular oh part God. of the family like that's how I see her because I'm like every time I see her she has no problem with the cameras she's just very no. obviously like her own personality yes and it's wild I think she could be she's the most laid back of all of us the least stress. She has no anxiety, no fear. She grew up around the cameras. She could hundred percent be the breakout, breakout star of this family for sure. I mean, she was in that Christmas movie with my mom. Um, she killed it with her her two little lines, but the director was like, Oh, she's a natural. Um, I could really see her, but she also gets straight A's, but so blase about it. I never see her do her homework. My mom's like, I don't know what's happening. This kid just gets straight A's. I don't even hear her talk about school. She's like so grown up. Um, so I think she could really do whatever she wants. Wow. Sounds sick. And then my next question is, okay, obviously we see your other sister enter in for the season finale of Buying Beverly Hills. So we're talking about this culture around your company. And of course we know that things are sensationalized, but when your sister comes in and your dad introduces her, <laughs> the entire the entire just office is like another one right I, know, like, I was dying of laughter it was hilarious <laughs> but then also you and alexia's faces were like excuse me like yes what? That's well how- i don't know love. if that was actually in that moment if that's necessarily the face that we made but it definitely amped up the other sentiments of of the office but the truth is um We are so excited for Sophia to join us. She is so funny, like the most funniest of all of us. Um, She has the driest sense of humor. She's so quick and sharp and um, she's the toughest one. She's like really strong. So I think it'll just be a really great other addition when she joins. Do you think that it like when we're hearing about you guys on the show and we're hearing you as sisters, like you have to, it's weird because some people sympathize and they see that you have to fight even more because it just seems like everything's given to you. And then some people are so just, maybe it's editing. I don't know, but I can't, I feel like you can't blame everything on editing. Some people are just like blatantly jealous that you have the opportunities that you do, but don't realize like you work your a double S off. Like you work for it. Do you think that no matter who comes in, if they come from your family they have to work that and go that extra mile in order to prove themselves. Like it's maybe even more harder than it is easier for them. hundred no? percent. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's harder to get the respect and the acknowledgement because people are just like, Oh, of course, Mauricio is your dad. Like that explains everything. They do not want to believe that like we could be capable of anything. Um, but then every time I do a deal with someone in my office, they're like, Oh my God, it's so crazy. You're so good at this. Oh my God, you actually work so hard. And I'm like, well, I'm glad that you (laughs) actually realized that. Um, but again, I have to, yes, acknowledge that other parts of it make it much easier for us. Like it could be easier for me to get a listing when I say, Hey, by the way, I was mentored and, uh, Mauricio is my partner and I was mentored by him. And now I've been in the business 12 years. So me going on a listing versus somebody that maybe just got their license and doesn't have that background, it could be easier for me to get a listing. So in some regards, I have immense opportunity advantages and others, I don't. Okay. And then my last question for you, because again, we know that you're extremely busy. I saw where your mom got a lot of pushback for her warning post on Instagram, which I thought... I did not, 100%, I completely did not understand. I think if anybody should be able to give you advice on joining a reality television show, it would be who better than your own mom, right? Especially with everything that she's been through. So I thought that that was like really sweet, great advice. And she almost like had to dead the conversation. So here's one post, this addresses everyone. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at it, I was thinking in my mind, okay, now that Farah has been through this and she's not watching one of her parents film the show or a reality show 
she's lived through it. Now, the beginning, what's going to come out of it, and then seeing how the editing came out and the feedback, is it something that you, in your mind, you're like, okay, we'll do it again. Come on, Netflix, season two. Definitely, yes. Um, I think that, yes, I was always very cautious, and even the producers during filming, they'd be like, you can, like, relax a little. And I was like, but you're going to fuck me over and like you're gonna splice my words and so like they would tell me like you're very diplomatic in your responses but that's just how I am in general anyways um but I'm like okay now that I see no one was like out to get me (laughs) um I think I will be even more or I'll try to be more relaxed because um I do I have seen some comments of people like oh she's uptight and I literally respond to them on Twitter I'm like you're right or there yesterday someone was like she's so awkward and I'm like I am like I am awkward all of those things I enjoyed though I really really enjoyed yeah it looked like you also knew how to run your business you're a boss yeah you came off like a a, like a a badass boss bitch and it's that. first of all, don't use the B word. And secondly, <laughs> when we saw your engagement and everything like that, I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm invested because I'm so invested and in just like, of course, we love our housewives, right? And yeah. you're going to constantly get compared. But now I'm like, now I want Farrah's wedding on reality Aww. TV and I want to see the babies and I want to see you as a mom. Like, we're invested. It's almost weird and it has to be weird for you, but. I'm just it saying, like, so weird, we want thank more. You. Yes. And not like I want to get more groupy sure. way, but you know, like, it's we get to no, see you in a small portion of your life. And now I'm like, I was literally sitting there. I had my mom who was living with us for like three months. She was going through a divorce, navigating things, and we were trying to help her out. And we're sitting there watching. It was at the same time that Buying Beverly Hills came out. And she's like, if I looked like her, and I was like, I know mom. And I'm like, she should not be asking for an engagement. Oh she my should just God. like, I said, she's smart. She's powerful. She's witty. She has like the entire business. She's beautiful. Oh my like, God, this conversation too. I remember walking just, into this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it was I'm, like crazy yes. because they wanted me to talk about it. Cause obviously in the beginning it was like, okay, tell us what's going on in your life. Oh, you have a boyfriend. Okay. What's the next steps? And then when I was like, Oh, you know, what? I'm not sure we're really happy. I don't know where then of course that became like a thing. Um, and it was a lot about talking about the relationship and of course having to address it. And meanwhile, he knew, you know, for the previous two months that he was going to propose. So he was kind of like going along, like giving it a hard time on purpose or like be playing kind of vague about it because he knew it was going to happen. But obviously we don't know that part, the backstory. So reading everybody's comments and some people are like, oh, you know, saying like, can't believe you're with this guy and all that stuff. And it's like, no, he knew it was coming. But I get it. <laughs> people are protective and I appreciate that also. And it's good to be on the receiving end of that where it's positive towards you. And it's like, okay, I'm sorry that they're going yes. after you, but they <laughs> love sure. me. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Jason, <laughs> I, I know that, um, again, Farah is super busy. So if you have any last questions, I'll stop interjecting my, you know, my and only I got last, them all out of the way. <laughs> no, no, wor- no. My only last question for you before we let you go. And, and again, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Yes. Um, thank you. There's always a hot neighborhood in Los Angeles in the area. There's always like a new hot neighborhood coming up. Where do you see the hottest neighborhood in LA right now for buyers? Well, funny enough, people used to, you know, laugh about the Valley, right? Make fun of it over the Valley, like who lives in the Valley, but I don't think it's like a, a new trend, but just literally in the last year, like during the pandemic, everyone moved to the Valley, everyone moved to the Valley. And now we're seeing, I just saw a listing come out, um, the other day, that's like $30 million in Encino, like, whoa. So I think it, the, the stigma towards the Valley has like gone away. You can get more land. It's like very convenient the park. Like everything is kind of easier. So I think that is just like a surprising, um, and still maybe a little bit underappreciated market. That's like starting to just take off now. Um, but other than that, I mean, areas like, I think even silver, like that's probably already taken off. But like Echo Park, I don't know much about it, but I know like my friends, some people are moving even more east. So I feel like just in general, the hub of LA, it's not just like Beverly Hills, West Hollywood anymore. Right. Like, in, like Culver City, I have a lot of first time buyers in Culver City and Mar Vista. So it's like moving outwards to all these different burgeoning little pockets. 
Do you think, okay, really quickly, because you did say Encino, we used to live in Sherman Oaks and then before that West Hollywood, mm. but we wanted a little more space and a little more neighborhood yeah. kind of feel. But do you think that because Maurizio being the head of this huge agency, moving to Encino brought a lot of attention to Encino? Maybe it had a little factor. <laughs> like even when he moved, my Alex and I were like, whoa, like you guys are moving to Encino for the first year. We like people would be like, Oh, what are your parents live? I'd be like, well, they, they lived in Bel Air. They just moved to Encino, but they used to be in Bel Air. And I'm like, why do I have to do this whole backstory? Like what is wrong with me? I'm such an LA person. Um, and we thought he was crazy. Like, how can you be the CEO of like the most luxurious real estate company and move to Encino? God forbid. And then it was like, Oh, little by little, you know, like Nick Jonas brought across the street from us and all these celebrities and all these athletes and all these people moved there and then it became cool. So I don't know if you can take all the credit, but maybe some. Maybe I love some. them. I love that. Yeah. She's like, I love that. She's and like, I will just say the one more thing about what you had mentioned. You guys are very sweet to like, just keep this about me and real estate in the show. But Thank I did you. watch your video yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I thought when you were talking about my mom and that post, uh -huh. And I thought it was going to be like negative about her. And I was like, well, I better tell them I can't do this podcast now. <laughs> but then I listened to it and that was very kind and sweet. And I do completely agree. I don't know what that girl was, why that was necessary to write that. Right. Um, my mom did text us that she did call us and tell us that in person, but she has the right to do that if she wants to. It's, it was not about her. I think it was just, you know, to put it out there, maybe it was to be like to other people, like be nice. And also, right. I mean, that's what people do, right? I think it was a like one in on social media. What's a big deal. And yeah. I'm also very cognizant. And I thought about the video went to when I was talking about it. And to be fair, I've also, inter I was the first YouTube interview for your aunt, um, Kathy. And so I've had Listen, I've had nothing but pleasant interactions. Like we also talked to um, your dad in DMs and we are hoping Aww. to get him on too. And it's it's been nothing but great. Um, when I did that video, I literally, I feel like I looked at her perspective as a mom of just saying yeah. like, there's probably hundreds of DMs coming through, like saying like, how could you with everything that you're going through? Yeah, let your daughters you? do this. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so I thought it was like kind of a one and done, like dead off, which made sense to me. And I'm thinking, okay, it sounds a little bit silly. And that's why I said in the video to Hannah from Below Deck, I have a great relationship with her. Um, didn't, didn't talk to her about any of this, obviously. But I thought in my mind, I'm like, I wouldn't really question this. This is really not for her daughters. This is for all of the fans who are probably sending her hundreds of DMs asking. And she probably had separate conversations with her daughters, which would she make did. a lot of sense. And she so. had said before, like, I would never let my daughters do reality TV. So it was also addressing that. So yeah. it's really not that deep, everyone. No. No. Please no. calm down. Mm. She's we an amazing mom. And, and that's I appreciate what, I, what you said. <laughs> yes, thank you. And that's what I said to her, uh, to your mom, um, liked a comment and she responded. But I said to her, I'm like, watching the family dynamic on buying Beverly Hills, which I understand um, competing networks or whatever the case is in certain mm -hmm. contracts. So we only got to see her on FaceTime when she was congratulating you for your engagement, which I still thought, of course, true your mom fashion. Like there's the tears, the emotions. Yes, like yes. she like bleeds through in the sense that she is such an incredible mom that just loves you guys. And she exudes that. And no matter what gets thrown her way on the show, you never question that. And then when we watch you on buying Beverly Hills, the way you act, the way Alexia acts, it's like, you can't, it's like a testament to your mom Aww, and it's a testament. So I mean, both parents, but your, your dad, we get to see as like a business guy, yeah. but like for your mom, it's wild. So there's she nothing. A, she did positive. a great job. She's a she great did. person and a great mom. So I appreciate we, your guys support and my whole family. Love them. I love them all. And, um, I, I really do. They're all great. Yes. And thank, Hey, listen, thank you for watching. And thank you. Guys. I would have totally under, I, I would have understood had you have backed out, but we appreciate the fact that you did it. And we didn't want this to be a page six, like title grabbing situation. We, I really mean, listen, wanted to we're, get to know we're you. called hot, messy podcast. The only thing that is messy about our podcast is Adam and I, when we do our no. banter at the end of the <laughs> yes. show, no, you guys are amazing. It. Love to hang out. Let's stay in touch. You guys are super cute and sweet. Oh, thank, thank you, you. and thank well, you so much for taking the time we appreciate you 
Of yes. course. Thanks, guys. Have a beautiful right. rest of your day and all of your other interviews. Bye.